Hello everyone, welcome to another very exciting tutorial. Kotus here and today we're going to be talking about how we can create this spinner over here in pure CSS and obviously I'm going to use SAS preprocessor to create and parameterize this so that we can have different number of segments. So a while ago, I give you a little bit of a story here. A while ago, I just stumbled upon this thing called fidget kind of stress reliever. And I, I thought this is a cool thing to create using CSS, but then I saw this toggle and clicked on it and saw this cool thing, uh, which is a spinner. You can actually click spin and start spinning. So what I'm going to do is, uh, what I really wanted to do, well, obviously I suspected that Google created this using SVG. So I inspected the element here and then I saw, obviously I was right. Uh, SVG is what they used. It's actually the easiest way to create this. But then I wanted to challenge myself to see if I can create the same thing using CSS. And then I started uh, coding. I went to Kotus.com, coded T, and created a new prototype. And this is the ultimate result that I got. And right now I'm going to just walk you through how I created this. So first things first, in the HTML, I created a parent container, which is this with a class of spinner, which is going to be our circle, right? And within that circle, based on the number of segments I want to have, in this case six, I created six divs, right? And then going back to CSS here, I, as I said, I, I used a SAS uh, preprocessor. So what I did, I went and clicked on this gear icon, and then I choose, chose preprocessor SCSS, which is the newest version of SAS. And then I'm going to walk you through how I created this. So I defined the num segments to be six, obviously. That's why, because I want to have num, number of segments to be six. And I also want to have six divs over here. So they are working great. Then I created a list, what we call list or arrays, uh, which is a bunch of uh, colors that I created. So I defined a, a variable called colors and then parentheses, I added a bunch of colors over here, uh, even more than six, so that maybe if I want to change the number of segments, I have enough values in my colors. And then on the spinner or the parent container, which is going to be our spinner or circle, I positioned it absolute, gave it the width and height of a zero. And then uh, what I did, I basically uh, gave it a top 50% left of 50% uh, and transform translate minus 50% on the X axis or horizontally and minus 50% on vertically. So basically it kind of centered my element. And then I basically, let's just remove this width and height. That is incorrect. I gave it a width and height of 200 pixel and border radius of 50%. And then I gave it an overflow hidden because I wanted to create a bunch of, uh, I wanted to kind of style my divs within it. And then I wanted to give it an overflow hidden to kind of make it a nice and round circle. So if I remove the overflow here, you'll see that it will look like something like this, right? So boom, giving it back. And then I started just giving some, uh, uh, sort of styles to the divs that uh, and then I created a spinner div These are the styles that all of the divs within the spinner actually Follow so position absolute I transform origin them to be the bottom right because that's the pivot point that I want them to rotate and I gave it gave them a width and height of 100 pixel, right and then using the SAS uh, uh, syntax, obviously we have spinner here, and then within that we have our divs. So basically that's why I have these parentheses. And then within that div, since I want to choose, I want to choose those divs using nth child. And obviously in order to do that in SAS, you use ampersand colon here, and then nth child. I just created a for loop. You said for i from one to the number of segments that I have, which is six plus one. Uh, I'm gonna just use nth child uh, i here, and this syntax is pretty much the syntax of SAS, which is called interpolation. Here we use hash and then parentheses i, 
And the reason why we don't just simply use I is because this definition is happening on top of our selector itself, right? So using, using this, I basically loop through all the divs that I have within my spinner. And then what I'm going to do is really giving it a background of using nth function, I use the colors based on their index, and here in SAS it starts with the index uh, i uh, from 1. So you can see that using nth function, I pass it the first parameter colors that I have defined up there, and then the index, and it just chooses the correct color. And then I use the transform to kind of rotate each of the divs, right, by using i minus 1 multiplied by 360 divided by num segments, right? So in this case, my number of segments is six. So 360, which is the whole round here, uh, as you might know, uh, so we divide 360 by num segments. So we know that we have to rotate each of the div, divs 60 degree. Uh, and then obviously you have to multiply those 60s by uh, the eye that you loop through to kind of rotate them to shape them like this, right? And I just uh, subtracted my one here from the eye which starts with one so that the first, the first uh, sort of div we don't want any uh, rotation. So it's going to be zero degrees, right? That's why there is a minus one and there's this plus one over here. To compensate for that and then as you might know in HTML uh, the hierarchy or the priority comes like it's going to be the first one this one will overlap that one and this one will overlap the previous one basically each div overlap uh, and goes on top of uh, the previous div that's why uh, this is going to work like this right and then obviously on the last one, unfortunately, if I rotate everything 60 because these are all squares, this last one will overlap the first one to some degree, right? Because we have a complete sort of square over here. The last one will overlap the first one. Now to compensate for that, I basically removed the color on the last one and then used pseudo element before, as you can see here. I'm checking if I, or the, the uh, div that I'm selecting is the last div, so it has the number of segments, the last one, which is six. I basically select the overflow hidden. So, and then using the before element, I gave the same properties as its parent, width and height, you know, 100 pixel background, choosing the correct background, and then top and left zero, and then using the transform origin bottom right. But then what I'm gonna do is that I rotate this backward, right, to the amount that it overlaps on the first one, right? So it's going to come here. So if I just remove this before here, let me just remove all the contents here for now. I'm going to show you what it really means. So if I, instead of this, if I just choose, uh, if, if it's the last one, just give it a background of, uh, let's say um, pink maybe, right? So what happens is that the last one overlaps our first kind of red uh, sort of div here. So it overlaps. What I want to do is that I basically know that this is going to be the last one. What I do, I created, I remove the color on this. I use the before element to add another div inside and then I rotated that back to the amount of this overlap over here right that's what I do really and basically I will get this kind of effect that I needed so the cool thing about this implementation is that if I change this to 5 it will still work if I change this to 4 it will still work, right? If I change this to seven, well, obviously we have to choose the uh, even numbers here. Well, obviously I need to add another div here. So I'm just gonna just add a bunch of div. Maybe I wanna go a little bit higher. So you can see that now we have eight. So if I change this to 12 maybe, 
you can see that now we have 12 right so this was the challenge that I wanted to do and I hope you learned something you can see how easy you can create stuff using SAS preprocessor and how you can utilize some of the functionalities like for loops like ifs to sort of create what you really want to do which is really hard using the normal CSS so if I show you the compiled CSS you'll see that this is the ultimate thing that the browser gets to sort of create so imagine there was no SAS you had to go find a kind of calculate what it is sort of replicate all of these divs uh, nschild1, nschild2, nschild3 kind of adding them manually over here but now using SAS you can pretty much create the same thing so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial please like and share this tutorial if you enjoyed it I would just say this is probably the only tutorial in the internet or on the internet that uh, talked about this nobody has done this before so this is pretty unique in this aspect and please subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed this tutorial I wish you a great day and night and see you next time goodbye